Hello, my name is Tom Schaefer. I'm pastor of Faith United Lutheran Church in Toledo, Ohio. Uh, and uh, today we begin our reading of the narrative lectionary. The lectionary is a series of readings and the narrative lectionary uh, takes us from the very beginning of the Bible, uh, from readings in the book of Genesis uh, through the New Testament. And so uh, we start in the beginning with Genesis 1. Thank you for joining us for Faith United Online. from Genesis, the first chapter, starting at the first verse. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together he called seas and God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seeds and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind and trees of every kind bearing fruit with seed in it. And God saw that it was good and there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night and let there be for signs and for seasons and for days and years and let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night and separate the, not, the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of, of every kind. And God saw that it was good. 
God blessed them, saying, be, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters and the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind, and it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, see, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit, you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made and indeed it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it because on it God rested from all the work he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. I want to talk to you about a question that we have all asked ourselves. Who am I? It's a question you ask yourself in the best of times and in the worst of times. When life has got you down and is kicking you in the teeth, we may ask that question doubting that we have a purpose or a reason for existing. When things are wonderful and you know you are experiencing the blessing of life, the blessing of God, we may ask that question out of humility or gratitude. Who am I 
that I should have this opportunity, this life, this kind of blessing in my life? We ask that question uh, for all kinds of reasons in all kinds of ways. But at its root, it is a question of identity. Who am I? What defines me? What makes me who I am? In a way, the whole Bible is about answering that question. But it answers it in the context of a relationship. And that is actually a very powerful and important thing to consider. Because what it tells us is something that we innately know to be true. You cannot know yourself apart from your relationship with people, the world, and the Bible would say, especially God. That's why in order to answer that question, we need to start at the very beginning of the story. We start in Genesis, the first book of the Bible, chapter one, verse one, the creation story. You see, the creation story, despite what many people argue, is not a story about how. It's not a story about how the world was created, i.e. seven days and seven nights and the such. It is really a story about who. Who created the heavens and the earth? And who and what did he create? So the beginning of understanding who you are is to understand who God is. Let's see what we can learn from our text today. It begins like this. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Now, the NRV translation, and uh, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, but uh, let, let's remind ourselves when we're talking about translations of the Bibles, of the Bible, what we're talking about is that the Bible was originally written in Hebrew and Greek, Old Testament, New Testament, and then what we read in English is translations that people have done um, of those original languages. And so there's lots of different translations, each with their own kind of flair and so forth. The NRSV is what uh, I normally read from, the New Revised Standard Version, and that translation says, a wind from God. Now, the Hebrew word there is ruach. I, I really love that word. I, I kind of feel like I'm speaking Klingon or something when I say it, ruach. Uh, and, uh, but that word, that Hebrew word has three meanings wind, breath, and also spirit. And depending on which translation you look at, you will see all three of those words used to translate ruach. So which is correct? Well, they all are. To think of the word meaning only wind or only breath or only spirit in any context is to impose a modern way of thinking on a word from uh, the ancient Middle East. Ruach means wind, breath, spirit of God. That's what it means. So for instance, Jesus can talk about the spirit of God this way. Jesus says, the wind blows where it chooses and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. But in another place, we read this about the Spirit of God. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Now, all of this is to say that here in Genesis, the very beginning, we read that the Spirit of God, the wind of God, the breath of God, the Holy Spirit joined God in the creative process. But God doesn't just send the Spirit to create, does he? God speaks creation into being. God says, 
let there be, and there is. And throughout the scriptures, God's word, God's speech, his speaking, God's word is understood as being full of power. For instance, check out what it says in Isaiah chapter 55. God says this, So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. So for this reason, God's word is understood as uh, an unbreakable promise. When God says it, it will happen. And Jesus was the promise of God in the flesh. He was God's word of redemption in the flesh. That's why in the very beginning of the Gospel of John, John says it this way. John says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. And the word became flesh and lived among us. John tells us that the very word of God that created everything walked this earth in the person of Jesus Christ. So, in the creation story, we see that God, from the very beginning, existed in relationship as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our God is a God of relationship. And that is very important when it comes to understanding who we are, who you are, of answering that question, who am I? When God created humanity, something special happens that did not happen with the rest of creation. Listen, it's, it says in our text today, then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Now look, all of creation, all of creation, every rock, every tree, every creature contains the breath of God. All of it came into being through the word of God. But only about humanity did God say, let us make humankind in our image. And one of the most important things this means is that you were created for relationship. We find our meaning and purpose in how we relate to others. That's why self-centeredness is uh, at the heart of all of sinfulness. Because you cannot be who God created you to be. You, you cannot be who you were meant to be if you live for yourself only. Your life will ultimately be defined by how you interact with others, how you treat others, how you respect and love others. I mean, think about it. How do you want people, <laughs> people to think of you at your funeral? What do you want people to say at your, your funeral? Oh, uh, you know, that Tom, he really took care of himself. No one was more important to Tom than Tom. <laughs> or, I remember how he helped me when I really needed some help. I always knew I could count on him. A lot of people loved him because he loved a lot of people. We were created to love one another. We were created to be in relationship with one another because we were made in the image of God, the image of the God of relationship. But there's more. 
we were also created to be in relationship with God. When God says we were created in God's image, the Hebrew word uh, for image carries with it the idea that you were imprinted on by, by God. It is as if God placed his hand upon you, like pressing your hand into sand or a, or a memory foam pillow, so that, if the, so that if the hand is removed, its imprint is left upon you. You bear the image of God. And as long as God is with you, that image, that imprint is full. Your life is full. But if that relationship is broken, if God is not part of your life, God withdraws and you are left with a void, a cavity that can only be filled by God. And we can see this truth in other places in Scripture. For instance, in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, it says that God has set eternity in the human heart. In other words, God created us with an inherent, inherent curiosity about the eternal and thus the longing to search for and to know God. In the book of Acts, St. Paul said it this way when he was speaking to the Athenians. He told them, from one ancestor, he made all nations, that being God, made all nations to inhabit the whole earth. And he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. Jesus puts it this way in the seventh chapter of John's Gospel, that anyone who is thirsty come to me and let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. The word that's translated here as heart also means empty place or cavity. Jesus is describing the empty place in the heart of a person that will be filled to overflowing if a person puts their faith in him. You were created to be in relationship with God. And just as you cannot be the person you want to be, that you were meant to be, apart from your relationship with other people, you cannot be the person you were meant to be apart from a relationship with God. When you don't have that relationship, you might not like to admit it, but there is a void, an empty place inside you. You know you're missing something. You feel a need, a drive to fill that emptiness with some meaning. Jesus describes it as a, as a thirst. And you can try to quench that with all kinds of things, other relationships, other things, other gods, but that void, that imprint was made by only one hand, and only one can fill it. Jesus says, come to me. Come to me, the word made flesh, the very promise of God incarnate. Come to me, come to me, who was there when God created you and breathed his spirit into you. You ask, who am I? Who are you? You are a special creation of God, made in God's image, made to love and to be loved. And when God created you, he saw that it was very good.
Thank you for joining us today. Um, uh, I, I, I hope that uh, you hear the answer to that question of uh, who am I uh, as being a person who was made by God, who's, who has the spirit of God within you, breathed into you, uh, that was made by the very word of God and that you were made in his image, that you are a special creation and that you are very good and that God loves you and desires a relationship with you. I, I, I hope that you, you've heard those words and that, um, uh, you know, if you have that relationship, you feel even more cherished. And if you do not have that relationship, know it is as simple as putting your faith, putting your trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And I hope that you will do that today. Uh, take a moment and subscribe to our channel. Share this video with anyone that you think it might be helpful with uh, for. And uh, until next week, God bless. Keep safe.